if he is found to be in custody, we think he should either be charged with a recognizable crime or else released. He's not alive. The Sri Lanka government should prosecute those who killed him. We don't know if he's alive or dead. That's part of the tragedy of this appearance for the family members and everyone else. That, and we want the petitions to go specifically to the local group in California so that they can in turn send some of them to amnesty members in New York and some other amnesty members in Washington so that we can have a delivery to all three Sri Lankan government offices in the U.S. next January 24th, which is the third anniversary of this disappearance. Because Sri Lanka has a U.N. mission in New York, we have an embassy in Washington, and we have a consulate in Los Angeles. So we want them to be aware that AI has members around the U.S. We don't just have members around the U.S., we have members around the world. But just in the U.S., we want to make them aware that there are people who care about what's happened to them, who think Sandhya and his children should know what's happened to them, and they should get justice for it. They should get him reunited with them, or if he's been killed, his murderers should be prosecuted. Was that my answer to your question? I have another question. Uh, the brochure that came out announcing this said we should look up this web page. I'll get to that as well. And I didn't know how we would select a, one civilian out of the thousands that were killed. We work on emblematic cases. So on, on what kind of cases? Emblematic. There are tens of thousands of disappeared people in Sri Lanka. Yes. We could have worked, picked any other of them. We've Perky, we picked uh, so that we can use his case to highlight the tens of thousands of other disappeared people. His wife, Sandhya, has become very, very active in the movement to account for the disappeared. So it's with her help and her consent that we are highlighting her husband's case. She wants as much help as we can. So you have to make a pragmatic decision. There are some family members of some of the disappeared who don't want attention. And of course, we need to respect them. And so we would not publicly push their family member's case if they don't want the attention. For Pergid, his wife has been very outspoken. She's traveled to Geneva to talk to the UN, Human Rights Council, about her husband's case. She's worked with other family members of other disappeared. She alluded to that in saying, you know, he's not the only case. And there are other member, other family members of other disappeared who she has been working with. You saw a couple photos of her participating in demonstrations in Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, on behalf of family members of the disappeared. So we, we are using that case to highlight the issue more generally. We also focus specifically on that, on his case. It's a very concrete thing to ask people to do. It's not just the issue you know, and, and numbers and no names and no faces. Here's a real individual that makes it concrete so people can get a sense of, when you talk about the disappeared in Sri Lanka, what do you mean? Who, who you're talking about? So that's why we, we try to pick particular cases as well as a way of campaigning and hopefully getting more people Will the petition say he's one of, I don't know how many hundred thousand that were slaughtered? Or? Tens of thousands. Well. Ten thousand. Tens of thousands. You know, have you considered a petition to strengthen the UN? It was so frustrating to watch that video and see the UN people leave just as they did in Rwanda. Is it any effort to strengthen the UN forces so that they can indeed prevent such occurrences? The, actually, the UN is about to release a report, which is an internal review of what the UN did in Sri Lanka in the final months of the war. And we expect that report to be released maybe the end of this week or next week. Uh, there's been a draft copy that's been released, and people in the press have seen it. And if the final report is anything like the draft copy, it's very critical of how the UN acted. So we'll see. I can't say that Amnesty right now is campaigning to strengthen the UN per se. My focus within Amnesty is Sri Lanka. And I'm very aware of the failures of the UN in Sri Lanka. 
uh, I, we have not as Amnesty taken on as part of the Sri Lanka work strengthening the UN. We're focused on pressuring the Sri Lankan government and the international community on several specific issues. I don't know if everyone else has seen the film you're referring to. She's How many of you saw it? Sri Lanka's Killing Fields. You know, more recently, the UN representative walked out of Syria saying that there wasn't anything they can do they could, because the United States, among others, has not strengthened the UN to send in sufficient forces to prevent it. Yeah, the UN is as strong or as weak as the member states will allow it. That's a political reality. The UN is not an independent third force. If the member states of the UN don't give it the ability to act, it cannot as sure you know. So it's a security council, isn't it? It's, it's very complicated, it's very political, yes. And the Security Council is part of the equation. I do have uh, some more, I actually